What's up guys? Welcome back to another great episode of the Gruesome Garage and some more progress on the green, green Buffalo. So we finally started getting the wire loom run through if you can see this absolute mess on the engine. But before we start talking about that, we'll show you the source of it all. So if you look in here, this is where the, one of the wire looms start. This is mostly the output stuff on the Mega Squirt. And if you look here, see all these red wires? That is the positive for all of the injectors. So it's just constant power, switch power to the injectors, which we started wiring up, as you can see. So we got the first three. Now the injectors are pretty easy to wire, especially when you have this awesome wire loom from DIY with everything labeled. There's eight spark outputs and eight injector outputs. Obviously, we're only using six of them, but it's super nice how we're able to just run it all. And I, that, I use that as the firing order and I'm gonna match that from injector I'm with the ABC through D, I mean through F, I'm gonna do that through the same thing with the spark. I'm gonna match the firing order just to keep it simple and it helps out a lot. <clears throat> also, if you guys see here, we wanted to make it look a little prettier than a normal wiring harness with just duct tape. So we decided to use some of this. Do you use duct tape on your wiring harnesses there, Jeff? Electrical tape. If you look at like a stock wiring harness, come over here. Stock wiring harness. It's just, you know, this cute clamshell stuff and electrical tape. And yeah, it, it works. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's not pretty. So my brother ordered some of this beautiful stuff up. It's just like cable, it looks like Chinese fingers. And you know, it just, it keeps everything more professional looking. It looks like you know, we kind of know what we're doing instead of... Not that we do, but... Yeah, not that we do, but... But another cool thing, which I forgot to mention, is Mega Squirt has so many options. So if you look over here, some stuff... This is stuff we're using. This is stuff that we use so far, but most of this stuff we're not using. You know, we could use it in the future, obviously, but there's boost controller in here. There's a flex fuel input. There's a launch, no, a launch control. There's also nitrous. There's attack output. So we, we might use attack output just on a, but we're probably just going to run a tablet. But it's just awesome to have this extra stuff. So while Jeff's working on the wiring over there, you know, tinkering around, whatever he does, I decided we got to mount some coil packs, whatever you want to call these. So what I did here was went to the old trusty dusty hardware store, got myself a couple of bolts, and uh, welded them right to the valve cover. Because to me, that's the quickest solution for now. You know, yeah, we could get fancy. We can make a bracket off the uh, off the valve cover bolts, like somebody recommended. I like the idea, but for right now, this is the quickest thing and the easiest for me. So now that we got these welded up mounted up, whatever. I also welded up one of the, uh, whatever you want to call them, the crankcase, breather, crankcase vent, one of the holes. I'm gonna weld this one up as well, and what I'll end up doing is, because we need some kind of filter on there, you know, a little ventilation. I'll drill a hole in here, and I'll just weld a uh, piece of pipe on there that we can stick a filter on. So, it looks a little cleaner. If anybody here plays with Cherokees, they know that the plastic fittings that go in here crack no matter what you do to try to take them out. And the ones that you buy aftermarket, they're OEM, whatever you want to call them, but they're not the original ones. The, the neck sticks up higher, and right here is where my brace for my, uh, my crossbar for my hoop sit. The coilover. It, it's really not important right now because these will be getting cut out and the coilovers will be tied into a whole tube front end. But... For right now, I think it looks better without all those stupid fittings up there. And with the coils up there now, I'm limited on room. So, bye-bye. We're back over here by the wiring. We got a little more progress done. Finished up the injectors, did the coolant temp sensor, 
stuff's pretty simple the injectors it's positive negative so you know you're getting the negative actually off of the mega squirt system because injectors are ground driven and then you're getting constant power off of our relay board which i explained before so with the coolant temp sensor it's super simple it's on the mega squirt there's a sensor input wire and you use a sensor ground and you hook it up you just go in your cherokee book or whatever wiring book you got hands and you look at the positive and negative on the sensor the pinout and you know you splice right in now obviously with a 96 it's a little harder since it's the only year but i'm pretty sure i got it right it's only two wires um but with 95 and older and the 97 to 2001 is obviously going to be readily available online that's exactly why we have an engine sitting over there by our cherokee tree stuff like especially this distributor it's obviously going we're not having a distributor and coil packs so we're ripping the cam position sensor out of that one and we're going to throw it in here to give us our you know spark output so let's get on to that so we got our coils mounted up here did a little welded jobber on the valve cover not the prettiest but works that's all that matters right now and uh, now that we got them mounted up, we can start wiring up all the connectors for those. Hopefully and the Amazon man came to the house. We have a crimper for the pins that go in there. And we also stole something off of another motor that we have lying around. These bad boys right here. A couple of spark plug wires off of our 4.8 that we'll probably end up putting in this 48 Plymouth here. But... We'll get new wires for that. I figured, you know, this is a, a Cherokee. It doesn't deserve nice new parts. So they're a little they're a little short, a little tight. So we'll see if they work. If we got to buy them, we got to buy them. It's no big deal. Yeah, we got to make some, you know. It's, it is what it is. But we figured. Saves us some time, saves us some money. So slap them on. Why not? So if you guys see over here, we made a little more progress too. We got the idle air control wire hooked up. If you notice that it's not the same connector, I took the connector off of a 2001 wiring harness that we have over by our Cherokee tree. And I also took the throttle position sensor connector off. It's just, it's gonna make it easier for us in the long run. Let's say one of the sensors goes, it's so much easier to find one of these sensors at the auto parts store than one of the 96. Nine times out of 10, they never have them because it's a one year sensor. So it's the same thing, it's just a different style connector on the end and it just, it sucks. So, you know, why wait a week if we need something now, we can just go to the auto parts store. The other thing is the wiring diagram, you know, color labeling, all that is so much more readily available for the 2001, you know, 97 to 2001, whatever you want to call it. And another thing we have here is we wired in our intake That's, air temperature. Yep. And this is the original I don't know if you can see it, the original... Uh... Intake air temp. We got a pigtail and a new intake air temp from uh, DIY Auto-Tune. For we, a GM. We thought it'd thread right in here, but it doesn't. It looks like it's the same sensor. It's the same connector. So we're going to try this one out. See Maybe, if it works. See if it works. If not, we'll just adapt the other one. Either we'll drill it out and thread it or we'll... Uh, probably little... drill it out and thread it. It's probably the right thing to do. Yeah, get that thing all buried in, into the uh, intake. Otherwise, it'll be... The tip of that probe will be in the adapter. Exactly, and, uh, it won't be actually in the sense in the manifold. So I don't know if that's going to affect anything. Probably won't. But you know, we trying to do things the right way. We've been doing things the half-assed way for so long now. It's time to you know do it right, do it once. Exactly. So next thing we're going to do is uh, hopefully wire up these coils and. We got to get this distributor out and get the uh, cam position sensor in. But the thing is, when you take these out and put the other sensor in, or anytime you're taking out your distributor, you should make sure it's in top dead center on, the on cylinder stroke. one on the compression stroke. So mm -hmm. we'll show you how to do that. When we put this back together after putting the cam in, we found out real fast that it needs to be on the compression stroke. We tried to get this thing you yeah, know, started start for a good 15, 20 minutes. We and thought it was connections and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we tried everything, but we realized that the distributor was turned 180 degrees. Yeah. So, so it was just firing on the uh, exhaust. So we just got to make sure that we don't do that when we put the camshaft position sensor in. We need to make sure that it's on the compression stroke. 
just so it makes it easier for when we try to start it the first time. So we're getting ready to swap our distributor over to a cam position sensor from a newer Cherokee. And the first thing we do is we get her at top dead center. And the way to do that is on your crankshaft or crank pulley harmonic balancer, you got a uh, little notch in it. And you gotta line that up with the zero on the plate on the timing cover. And you have to double check and make sure you can do it with the valve cover off to see if it's on the exhaust or the uh, intake stroke, or you can do it with the distributor. So once you get that, you can pull this bad boy out and we'll pull out the uh, cam position sensor on the newer 4 -0. We now find Jeff over in the boneyard. What are we doing here? Striping. Taking this beautiful sensor from this Cherokee, it's a camshaft position sensor. And we're gonna put it in the Cherokee. A little dirty. A little dirty, we'll clean it up. See what happens. We pulled out the camshaft synchronizer, camshaft position sensor out of the 2001 Cherokee. And, you know, I didn't think it would be bad, but upon further inspection, pulling it apart, if you look inside, it's really grimy. It looks like maybe the seals through it blew over time and maybe oil's coming up through it. I don't know, but they're not that expensive. So we're gonna get a new one of these and we're just gonna have to wait. We can obviously wire it up. I have the top, I have the plug in, so we can wire it up, but we're gonna have to wait on installing this. So might just have to put a paper towel on the hole for now. We started pulling some wires through. We have our throttle position sensor here. We have our idle air control, our, oh, I'm sorry, this is the idle air control. This is the uh, thermostat water temperature, whatever you want to call it. And then all these here, like we said before, are pa constant power to the injectors. We took the uh, relay board out just so we don't get it dirty. It's open right now. And uh, now we just have to wire up some coils, crank position sensor, cam position sensor, uh, a couple more things, get some gauges, some switches in, and another couple, maybe a week or two, this Jeep will be ready to roll. Hopefully she starts.